Umachi has a brand new unified menu system to control everything there is to mess with on the system. Your themes, your installations, your removals, your configurations, everything. It's accessible up here in the top left on this little icon up here or on the hotkey that you see listed below on super alt space. If we're gonna hit that, you can see the first option is the familiar Walker app launcher. You can use that as normal. It is also available directly on super space. But if we hop in here and take a look at the next menu, learning, you will see the key bindings, which are also accessible on super K, where you can filter down and see all the different options we have on the many key bindings we have set up. But if we jump down further, you'll see the uh, Omachi manual is linked up here as a web app. You'll find that that is updated on every new release with the latest stuff. So it's a great resource to check out. For example, if you wanna know more about how you're setting up your monitor for your specific display, you can do that here. But if we hop back in, it's not just Omachi itself. Hyperland, for example, has a wonderful wiki that'll teach you more about how you configure the system and set it up and make it your own if you need to tweak anything. But um, we also have Arch, the Arch wiki. We have NeoVim. NeoVim, of course, is the standard editor for Omachi. And there are about a billion Vim motions that you can learn all about here on the Lazy Vim distro that Omachi uses by default and is configured that way. Finally, we have uh, Bash, for example, which is something I use quite a lot to write all the installation scripts for Omachi. I very often need to look up the slightly arcane syntax and format for this very nice shell scripting language. Um, but let's hop into some actual controls. Capture is a way to capture screenshots, screen recordings, or color uh, ha uh, hex codes. But you can, of course, do that on the direct hotkeys for all of this stuff. But sometimes you just don't remember, for example, what is the hotkey for taking a screenshot of an entire display or just going up to region. If I just do region here and capture a screenshot, you can see we get our new wonderful um, setup for manap manipulating these images. I can do that. And if I just hit return, I will have it copied to my clipboard and saved it to a file. The same thing is true for screen recordings. And of course, we also have the color picker here to get that hex code. And in fact, if you jump in here and say you went to screen recording and you regret, you can push escape to go back out through the menus. Now let's hop down to toggle. We have a number of things we can toggle on and off. For example, we have the very nice screen sh saver. That, by the way, also comes on by default now after two and a half minutes of inactivity. Hop back out of that and jump down to toggle. But let me do it a different way now than just using the arrow keys. The really neat thing about this new menu system is everything is accessible super quickly through the keyboard. So you can just start typing any of the options and toggle, for example, the top bar. You can turn that on and off in Omachi, which is really useful on a small screen like a laptop where you don't wanna lose any of that vertical space. On a desktop, it doesn't make as much sense to hide it. Now, let's hop down to style. In style, you'll be able to set the theme, the font, and the background. If we start with the theme here, we can hop in and do Ristretto, for example. That's uh, one of those lovely new themes that we added in quite recently. I can hop back into style, um, and then I can also change the font now. This is also one of the recent things we've set up. I can do JetBrains, for example, and you'll see that's actually slightly too large for the um, logo we have in there. But now I'm running the JetBrains front. If I hop back in to style and to the font, I should change the width of this clearly such that it also fits with JetBrains. But I'll hop back to my beloved Cascadia Mono nerd font. Um, Let's see what else we got under style. We have the background. If you have your theme set up for, by default, only Tokyo Night has multiple backgrounds, you can change or uh, jump to the next background. And every time you go in there and do the same thing, it'll jump to the next background. All right, I'm going to jump back to the default because I really like this sunset. 
that style, if we go to setup, you'll see all the different configuration options that some of them we also have in the top right. We have, for example, the audio configuration where you get this nice TUI and with tap, you can go back and forth between these different setups. You'll see on my input right now, I'm using that Sure mic and that little diamond means that this is the default input. And on the output devices, I'm using my beloved KEF LSX2 speakers and they're set up also with that little diamond meaning that they're the default. What I really like, by the way, in here is that you can just hit like three and I'll put the volume to 30% of seven and it'll put it to 70%. Very nice. Let's hop in and see what else we got under setup. We have uh, Wi-Fi being controlled by Impala. We have, um, what else here? We have Bluetooth and then we have something quite interesting here. If you go into monitors, you're actually going to get the configuration file for Hyperland monitors. You'll see here, we got a little notification telling you exactly what that file is, such that you know exactly what you're changing. And now if you make any changes here, it's instantly going to change the monitor setup. Let's hop back in and see what else we got. Um, key bindings. So we now have the config Hyperland set up with the individual configuration files in the latest version version of Omachi, where everything is sort of separated out. So you can just add your own bindings in here. I could do a YY to copy the line and then a P to paste to it. And if I wanted um, something else for posting here, let's say I was posting on a different platform, I could do uh, and change the web app in here. I can do C, that is change, I for inside, and then Q for quotes, and I can start writing another um, web app that we're gonna hook up here, and that would be on the same line. I'm just gonna DD to delete that line and then Control S to save again. Any of the changes you make in here are instantly updated, so you add a binding in here and it is immediately being used. Let's hop in and see what else we got. We got the input here, that's to change the keyboard repeat rate. It's where you can set up your keyboard layout options. For example, if I wanted the Danish keyboard, I would um, XX that to comment it out. Actually, I could do, um, instead of XX, I could do Shift V to mark the whole line and then do GC to comment it out, I'm not gonna do that. Mark the line again and GC again to comment it back in. And if I was adding that Danish layout, I would also delete this because then I could switch between those lay layouts on Alt Space to do those groupings. I'm gonna UU again to turn that back. You can change the sensitivity for your mouse, you can change how the scroll pad work. And again, like the monitor file, as soon as you make a change in here, Hyperland will detect that and instantly reload it. I'm just going to super W to close that out again. Now let's have a look at, before we jump into Unfix, I'll show you, for example, setting up a fingerprint sensor on a laptop. We have support for quite a few, not all, but quite a few, and including the framework laptop. So if I hit that, I'll get dropped into an Amachi setup script that um, will install the dependencies that we need for those fingerprints and require, of course, your sudo passwords to do those installations and then it'll capture your fingerprint so that it'll be set up. I don't have a fingerprint, uh, fingerprint sensor here on my desktop machine, so I'm just gonna close out again on Super W. Now let's hop in and see something pretty neat here. Under configs, you can change any of the setups for any of the tools that are included into the default setup for Omachi. That's all the Hyperland ecosystem stuff. Hyper Idle, for example, for changing the idle configuration, the lock screen, sunset, how to set it up such that you get a warmer color temperature on your screen at night. Um, and Walker, that's the application launcher, Sway, OSD is the overlay that you get when you um, change, for example, like this, change the volume, that's Sway OSD. You can change the look and feel of that. Walker is that launcher that we're using. And then Waybar is the top bar that we're using. And I'm gonna demonstrate something neat here. So I'm gonna pick that, it's gonna open it up. You can see, again, the notification tells you where that file is. And I'm going to make a change. For example, let's delete the clock. 
So DD deletes the line, Control S saves it. And now I'm going to exit out of this on Super W. And as soon as I do, the way bar top bar is reloaded and you can see the clock is gone. I can bring that back up again, of course. Go to setup, go to config, go to way bar, and then just do U to undo. I'm gonna save that again. I'm gonna close it out and now the clock is back. You can change all these configs as much as you like. Of course, bear in mind, if you make a mistake here, you can end up screwing some of these um, setups. So even if I made it easy to access, you still have to take some care. Omachi and Arch and Hyperland is full of sharp knives and it's entirely possible to cut your fingers off if you don't pay a little bit of attention. But it's always nice to be able to use an AI, which by the way, we have fully built in here on uh, Super A will open ChatGPT or Super Shift A will open Grok and you can just ask it if you're uncertain about something. But let's hop back in here and um, carry on. I'll go down to install. So under install, we can either install a new AUR or Pac-Man package in here. If I hop into that, I will actually be using this really neat combination of SFF to filter down the list. Let's say I wanted to install VS Code. That's gonna be VS Codium. I'm just gonna use the bin version, so install it quickly. Hit return here. It's gonna do the full installation and setup. It's gonna ask me for my sudo. And then we're gonna have it installed. It is done now. If I hit um, super space, go down to VS Codium. I'm gonna start the Wayland version. And then bam, here we are in VS Codium right away. I'm gonna close that out again. And then I'm gonna show you something else. I can jump down to remove. It has a mirror of that installed package. And now I see everything that's installed on the system. So if I go back to VS Codium and I uninstall it, then that's gonna be removed. And now if I hop back into the application launcher, boom, it's gone. Anyway, let's carry on with install. We also have web apps. So there was a function to do this in the console all along, but now there's a neat little TUI that you could do it on. So it takes the name of the web app. Let's do my personal blog here. I'm gonna give it the URL for my blog. That's on world, hey, slash David. A DHH, and then you can see here, it recommends that we go to these dashboard icons.com. If you hold down shift and then you click the mouse over it, it's gonna open it in the background. We can hold down super and then drag this window out of the way. Um, let's see, what should we do here? Paper, is there something for that? Yeah, let's just use this paper list. I don't know who hell this icon is. You just copy this PNG icon onto your clipboard. I paste it in, that's control shift B, and then I hit return. And now DHS's blog is going to be found on the application launcher. Boom, that is pretty neat, isn't it? You now have it running in this beautiful frameless setup and um, it is available through your application launcher at any time. But we can also just remove that again. Let me um, hop out of this too. Hop back in and go down to remove, go down to web app, and it'll show you an entire list of all the web apps that's installed on the system. So you can even remove the defaults, but I'm just gonna remove the one we just added right here. Now it should also be gone from the application launcher, and it is. All right. You can also install themes. These are extra themes. Uh, Omachi ships with 10 default themes, but if that's not enough for you, there are a bunch of extra themes that people have made. So if we hop back out on escape and then we go down to learning, go down to Omachi, the Omachi manual, we can go down to a page here called extra themes and we can pick an extra theme here. Um, I kind of like this uh, retro PC themes. So I'm gonna hop to that. That is just a GitHub repo. And all I need is the URL for that. So you want the HTTPS URL and you can just click this little copy to clipboard. Then we hop back in, we hop into install, we hop into theme and control shift B, paste in that theme. It's gonna clone it in and instantly going to shift over to it. Isn't that pretty neat? I think that's pretty neat. 
Now, if you don't like that theme for whatever reason, you can do exactly as we were doing before. You can go to remove. You can actually see this theme is a little busted. It doesn't have the right highlight color, so it's just kind of hidden. But we'll go down to theme for remove, and then we can remove any of the extra themes that have been listed. We only have one right now, that's retro PC. I'm just gonna hit return, and it's gonna just grab the next theme in the list. Um, this is Resetto, is that what it's called? Let's see uh, if we do the style, we do the theme, we can see it's actually highlighted down here in, um, in italics. I'm gonna jump back to Tokyo Night and finish this up. Let's go down and see what else we got under install. We got Dropbox. If you're using Dropbox, as I am, um, you have a single runner that sets everything up and installs all the dependencies that you need. The same thing as Steam if you're into gaming. And then we also have Docker DBs. This was a feature we had sort of hidden before. Now you can install any of these Docker DBs set up by default to be used for local development. I will install MariaDB. You hit space on the ones you want. You can install multiple at a time and then you hit return to start this installer. Uh, it can't find that MariaDB locally, so it's gonna download the Docker image. It's gonna pull it down and then, oh, there was actually some error there. I'm gonna have to look into that. But if you have it set up and if it works correctly, you will then do super D that'll start your lazy Docker setup. And you can see, I actually already have a couple running here. I have Redis and I have MySQL 8 and I have some app specific ones. Oh, the MariaDB one did start. I'm gonna debug that later. Super W closes it out again. Let's hop back in and see what else we got. That was all for install. So again, escape gets you out of that menu. We can hop down to remove. We'd already removed the package, we've already removed the web app, we've already removed the theme, and then if you had set up fingerprint or uh, FIDO2 keys or devices, you could remove those in here as well. Update. So you can update Omachi from in here. Omachi now also has a notification that pops up right up here next to the clock, and it'll show you if there is a pending update, and you can just hit that and it'll start the update, but we can also manually go in and say, let me get the updates. It says so much, it was already up to date. I'm going to update my system packages for Arch. It'll also always offer to do that. I am fully up to date, so there was nothing for me to get there. What else can we update? Oh, you can take any of the configuration files that you might have been messing with and then returning to their default. So if you've somehow managed to screw up your Waybar, you can just pop in here and select Waybar and it'll use the default config when you hit return on that. Finally, you can update themes if you have any extra themes uh, installed. I hit return here and you see done. There isn't any themes to update. If I had kept that Restro PC mod in there, it would have pulled down the latest from that GitHub repo. So perhaps if the uh, highlight color is fixed, you could go in there and you could get the latest update. And then finally, you can also update the time zone from in here. This is pretty convenient if you're traveling with a laptop and you're in a new time zone and the clock up here is not right. You can always do it on the right mouse when you hover over the actual clock. I see if you click on it once, you actually get the date and including the week number. But if you click the right mouse, it'll also update the time zone to wherever you are right now if you're connected to the internet and it can do a geo IP lookup. But just in case you forgot that that's on there on the right mouse, you can do it from the update menu. And then finally, we have about, that's just gonna open the fast fetch to describe your system. And finally, we have the system menu that can do the lock, suspend, relaunch, restart, and whatnot. That is also still available on Super Escape if you wanna jump directly to that. So that is the new menu system for Omachi. It's really fast to use. You can use it through keyboard commands, get everywhere in no time at all. And once you get used to the different menus, you'll be able to hit just the minimum number of keys to be able to access anything and work with it directly. I hope you like it.